Happy Thursday to you. So glad that uh, you're able to join me this morning. Thank you for being a part of my life today. Uh, I want you to turn with me to Judges chapter 10, the Old Testament book of Judges. And uh, we're going to be looking at one verse today, verse 16. Uh, as I was doing my reading this morning, there that verse just absolutely leapt off the page and just assaulted me. Uh, it's just blown my mind, uh, and so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, in, if you recall the book of Judges, uh, it's uh, chronicling the history of Israel uh, post uh, taking the uh, promised land. Joshua has died, and we go through a period of different leaders being raised up to judge Israel or to lead Israel. Uh, and basically, we see Israel locked into a pattern that unfortunately is going to go forward into the Old Testament, where there'll be seasons where they they are serving God and uh, you know and, and 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 there's peace in the land then they will begin to adopt the pagan worship practices of the neighbors around them and they'll begin to to flirt with the bales and uh, and stop worshiping God and God and God will take his hand off of them calamity will come upon the nation in the form of you know a lot of times it's a raiding party from one of the uh, pagan neighbors around them um, and then they'll cry out to God, and God will raise up a judge. I mean, this is a vicious cycle you see. And we see in Judges 10, uh, where once again, uh, verse 6, And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of, the Syri of Syria, and the gods of Sidon, and the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Amnon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the, of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Amnon. And and so you see here the people of Ammon and the Philistines are are attacking Israel. And again, as predicted, uh, verse ten, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. Then verse eleven, listen to what God says. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Amnon and from the Philistines, also the Sidonians and the Amalekites and the Moanites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Here we see God saying, your history is over and over. You keep turning your back on me, so I'm done. I'm not going to deliver you any more. And he says, verse 14, go and cry out to the gods which you've chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. Now, can you blame God? Over and over, the children of Israel have, have you know, they've turned away from him and flirted and, and committed adultery, if you will, with the other gods of the land. They keep turning their back on God. So I don't think anybody can blame God here for saying, you know what, I'm done. I mean, think of yourself. If you have someone in your life who, who is continually over and over and over, uh, you know, doing that to you, say, say your spouse, uh, you know, say, you know, they keep cheating on you over and over and over again. They come back every time oh i'm so sorry that was the last time i'll never do it again but they do it again we can understand here god saying i'm done uh, verse 15 and the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day. Verse 16. And here's the verse that knocked me on my, on my backside this morning. So they put away the foreign gods and, from among them and served the Lord. And his soul, God's soul, could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Man, do you see God's tender compassion and mercy and love for his people? God, it literally, his soul could no longer endure the, mer the misery of Israel. You know, as hurt as God was, you know, as, 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 as you know, as, you know, you know as, as just heavy as his heart was because of the rebellion of the people, his love for those people caused him to, 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 to just have compassion. And he once again sends a deliverer to deliver his people Israel. You know, Oh, you know, and again, I hate to tell you this, and I because I've read the rest of the book, and I, you know, it, this wasn't the last time that Israel turned their back on God, and over and over, God shows His long suffering and patience. Now, understand their rebellion had consequences. Uh, people died. Uh, people that God, you know, God judged them because of their their sinfulness and and their turning their back on Him. So their their rebellion had consequence. But God always showed himself faithful over and over and over. 
and he could no longer endure the misery of Israel. He saw the misery that they were in because of their sin. He saw the misery they were in because they were chasing false gods, gods that could never deliver what was being promised. And, and he, he had compassion on them. Now, friends, for you and I today, um, you know, we have had the ultimate expression of God's, God's compassion uh, already delivered to us in the form of Jesus Christ, taking our sin upon the cross. And, you know, and God continues to pour his compassion and long suffering on us uh, through the Holy Spirit inside of us. Because if you're like me, uh, you still struggle and you, you fail, you sin. And, and, you know, you're much like Israel. There'll be seasons when your heart is set upon God and you're really seeking him and trying to live in a manner that's worthy of him. And you're trying to, you know, you're relating to him. But then there are other seasons when your flesh is so powerful and you're following after the things that your flesh flesh or, or grabbing a hold of telling you that, uh, you know, that if you just do this, if you just have this, that somehow you'll find that elusive happiness you're looking for. Um, in those seasons, understand that God's heart for you is still the same. His love for you is still sat steadfast. Now, there are going to be consequences to my roaming. There's going to be consequences to me chasing after my flesh and, and, and you know, and allowing those impulses to dominate my thinking and my, and my action. There are going to be consequences to my actions. But I can always understand that the steadfast love of God is always the same for me. That grace and that mercy is always there for me. Now, how should we respond? Well, you know, as Israel should have learned and as we should learn from their example, put away the foreign gods from among us. Stop chasing after things that aren't going to be able to produce. And let's be faithful to the Lord our God, because in him we find what we're truly looking for. A God who never turns his back on us, a God who always loves us, a God full of compassion and mercy. And, you know, God is always there. So, friend, for you and I today, when we are uh, tempted to act upon our selfish impulses and go after things that we think are going to provide for us what we're really looking for, let's remember the Lord our God. Let's remember the compassion and mercy of God. Let's remember the grace of God. And let's let that grace rise up in us and cause us to forsake the foreign gods, forsake the things that are calling to us, forsake our flesh, and put our eyes on God. Because that's where we're going to truly find what we're looking for. Steadfast love and mercy. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for your word today. And I just pray, God, that today we would be able to live our lives in such a way that we would forsake the things of our flesh, forsake, forsake uh, the, the world and its call upon our lives, and may we put our eyes on you and follow you steadfastly. I thank you, God, for your word this morning, and I just pray that our lives would reflect your beauty and your glory. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a tremendous Thursday. One more day. Keep your eyes on the prize. God bless you guys.